Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily chat. This is episode number 752. The topic today is going to be blunt. Your childhood messed you up for love. And the second part is let's change that. So there's good news in this. It's not just going to be like, oh my God, no. It's actually going to be, oh crap, and now let's solve it. So before I break that one down, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do all this stuff and all these talks. My name is Barry Selby, as you probably figured out already. Um, I am the best-selling author of 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a relationship attraction expert, best-selling author and inspirational speaker. I just said best-selling author twice. I realized that. Okay, backing up. And also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. I'm in service to women in their work, in their calling, in their lives. And that's what drove these talks, as well as helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a, an avid Facebook Live broadcaster, which is what this is, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube. So every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, I do a Facebook Live, and have done now for over two years, called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And today we're talking about your childhood. Ooh, yeah, that messy place. So I'm going to give you some pointers, and this may be perfectly relevant to you. Then again, it might be people who you know this relates to, which you can please give it, um, nudge them with this one, share it with them maybe, that would help. And also some things you can do to change it, because... I'm going to say it this way initially, but I'm going to break it down another way because you may be going, what do you mean? What do you mean? So let me just state it again so you know what I'm talking about. Your childhood ruined, well, how do I say it? Your childhood messed up your, really? how did I say it? Oops. <laughs> yeah. What I'm attempting to say is your childhood messed up your adult love life is what I'm attempting to say. The truth is that we are all influenced when we're very young, but we don't know it's happening. So I'm basically going to expose the, um, the hidden agenda <laughs> of family life that influences your dating choices and then give you some paths and choices and options to change that as you're now an adult. As pretty much everybody watches my broadcast is an adult, that's good. So what do I mean by your, your childhood ruins your love life or, or, or messes up or whatever it does to your love life? Simply put, your childhood is where your life plans get imprinted. And what I mean is that you, as a younger child, and this is this is my background in psychology speaking and also studies with people like Bruce Lipton, so this has been researched and proven. It's not just me making it up most of the time. I do make this up once in a while, but this one, this, was, this one's on point. In Bruce Lipton's book, The Biology of Belief, he speaks about that this is from the, this age, the age of zero to five, we are an open book being imprinted. So what I'm talking about here, in the relationship quadrant or quotient of life, Sorry, I got something in my eye. I was, I was bite writing earlier, and I'm okay. Should be out of it now. Okay. So zero to five, as children, most of us, you may be, a, if you remember that far back, weren't particularly conscious about deciding what we wanted to do. We just went along with life. We may have thrown some tantrums. We may have had some questions, but we were watching the way things happened around us, going, "Oh, that's how that works. That's how that works." Noticing how car doors open, how house doors open, how keys work, how all these different things we didn't know how they worked. We learned this way. As children, we are inquisitive, learning, hungry to know, and also without any understanding of anything to begin with. That's the way childhood is. You know, if you've got any kids or you know kids, when they're that young, they're very much um, exploring their world and getting to know everything, attempting to set up boundaries, take dominion, do all these different things, but are very inf in very infant formats because we're very young. What's it got to do with a relationship, you might be thinking or asking? So I'll tell you. Part of that discovery process and research that we're doing, not, not like clinical research, but childhood informational going, is that how it works? Is we look at the way behavior is portrayed by the adults around us. <clears throat> Again, this is not conscious, this is not deliberative, this is not planned. This is what we do automatically because we are learning at the feet, almost literally, of the adults around us, our parents usually. Maybe other peers, maybe other relatives, but we look at the adults and consider that what they're doing as being the way things are done. It's almost like automatically presumed it's the right thing to do. And if you've been around kids, you know they can be influenced this way and it happens automatically. It's almost it goes in underneath the level of our conscious mind. Because at the age of zero to three, four, five years old, our conscious mind isn't really active yet. Right now it's just the wide open midbrain, the um, which one is that? I can't remember, hippocampus? I'm trying to remember which part of the brain it is. I don't know all the technical terms, but basically what it is is that our subconscious mind, which is really the part I'm gonna talk about in a minute, 
is the part that's taking up, taking in everything like a sponge. It's receiving information. It's learning. It's hungry to know what is. And it does that about everything, from car doors and keys opening doors to hot stoves to water, how it pours, how it freezes, all this different stuff, including the way love is expressed. Again, not intentional, not conscious. We don't have an agenda. We're not running a list of things we need to learn. But we watch and observe the way things are done as adults around us and look at that to mimic it, to copy it. Because as you may realize, young kids mimic stuff. We learn by watching the adults. We learned, period, past tense, because I'm not three or four years old. We learned as young kids to do things by usually by copying, by watching, by taking note subconsciously. This is not stuff we go, okay, I need to practice this and get it better and better. We just take it into our into our pores, into our, our cells even. I think in Bruce Lipton's work, he talks about it goes into, I think it's soul level memory, I think he talks about. So this is subconscious. This is not a conscious mind activating this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop the big, the other shoe in a minute about what that means down the road. So again, first few years of life, we are watching the way that the world works, watching the way our parents interact, watching the way our parents treat us and decide without any conscious volition that that's the way love is expressed. Now, if you've got a childhood that was challenging, you might be starting to go, oh crap, in a moment. So that's what happens to the childhood. Fast forward to your adult life. As a conscious, awake adult, you are one, aren't you? It's quite possible you think you know what you're doing when it comes to love, because most people do think they know what they're doing, even if they're getting a dating app and swiping, tapping, whatever. The choices they're making, they may believe they have volition over. And I'm sorry to break it to you, but you don't. You know, I'm smiling because the truth is what I want to do is I want to break this to you in a way that's not that's fairly gentle, but also gives you some realizations because you may be noticing, I should say, if you step back for a moment from your past few dates, relationships, romances, whatever you want to call them, and consider the common threads, you may be aware that there's a resonance or a familiarity in those relationship experiences that were the same that harks back to when you were a child. One caveat, excuse me, I just realized there's one thing. That's one way it works, and sometimes it's the exact opposite. But usually it's one or the other. So it's like it's, it's exactly the same paradigm you had as a child. Um, when I put it on the screen, child that as you get to become an adult is repeating itself without even knowing it. And this is the thing I mentioned at the beginning that the imprinting, the memorization, the learning of this behavior goes straight into the subconscious. It's like you're going in past the gatekeeper straight into the subconscious mind, it's stuck in there, and that's the way life is. And the belief is imprinted, not in stone, but in your cells. As you go through life, you will notice that, especially as you, especially in your teens and early 20s, more than any other time, it would be the most overt way of seeing it. I feel like it's more subtle, because you think you're figuring it out. You look back at your dating life experience at those times and notice where the common threads are, the parallels to what happened when you were a child, as in watching what happened in your life relationship-wise, overlay that with the one of your parents had, either with each other or with you. It's, an, it's a very high percentage rate, I don't know what the numbers are, I can have the, written on the research myself, but it's a very high percentage rate of overlap where there's a common thread or a, or a um, almost duplication of your adult dating experience compared with your observation as a child of your parents' relationship, again, with each other or with you. For examples, I'll give you a couple of examples just to illustrate that. Um, I'm just going to choose a couple. If you grew up in a family where your father, now this, I'll speak to the women about this one mostly because most of my clients are women and most of the people watching this are women, so if you grew up in a family where your father was never around, Maybe he was working all the time and workaholic and you barely saw him or he traveled a lot, you never saw him. You might notice that as an adult, you may be dating men who were absent most of the time. Not necessarily traveling or working a lot, but maybe they just didn't show up and were present with you all the time. Maybe they were with you, but you didn't feel they were even with you. They were like somewhere else. Their mind went somewhere else. There's different versions of that, but the same thing's happening where the male person you're with, ladies, the, the guy you're dating, is checked out either physically somewhere else or mentally, emotionally somewhere else. And it happens repeatedly. Now, it may not happen every single time, but if you look back and look clearly at your history, your history you may notice this common thread because this is how it works. Another example, maybe more, um, well, this is actually, 
I remember quite, I've quoted this many times. It was a story I read in the, news, I read the newspaper years ago when there were still newspapers. <laughs> but it talks about, a, it was actually about a domestic violence case happening in the Deep South. And the police were called to this house where there was basically abuse and violence and things happening. And they went to, the police went to the house and could hear, when they got to the car, they came screaming, yelling and banging and stuff in the house from the street. They went up the pathway to the front door, not on the door, but there's no answer because they're just yelling and everything that couldn't, couldn't be heard. The front door was open, they went inside. About a minute later, the two police came back out to the door with this big burly guy, the husband, red in the face, almost steam coming over his ears, with a white bit of t-shirt looking extremely upset, angry, cursing, and looking very, um, what's the word looking for? Put out. <laughs> so these police are carrying this, I mean, half carrying, half walking, this, cut, this guy back to the police car, down the end of the, end of the pathway. I presumably going to either arrest him or just subdue him or do something. A few seconds later, a woman comes to the door looking, probably the wife or the partner, with a black eye, bloody lip, looking disheveled, distressed, tears coming down her face. And she's leaning on the doorpost and she has a kitchen knife in her hand. And she starts to stagger fairly quickly down the path behind the, behind the police and, and her husband. And she reaches up with a knife and she stabs one of the cops in her shoulder. Now, you may be thinking, wouldn't she ever want to hit her husband? Like, no, she actually, actually hit one of the cops. Now, fast forward to when the paramedics arrived and they got to calm down and everyone got to start to get to have a conversation. What they finally got out of her and understood with her is that she was experiencing, when they took her husband away, the removal of her only source of love. As strange as this is going to sound. When they did some bigger, bigger deep, sorry, di deeper digging, get the words around, they, dis they found out that her history, her upbringing, where she was raised in her family, she was abused by her father. And she basically had chosen abusive relationships up to and including her husband, who was beating up her all the time, but it just went out of hand so much that the police were called because the neighbors complained about it. And what she was doing was basically protecting her source of love as much as it was hurting her physically. She believed that when he hit her, he loved her. Now, that's an extreme case to make my point. But the, between a very simple illustration, like workaholism or something like that, and that extreme, these are the types of things that we imprint. Again, younger childhood, viewing our parents doing stuff, stuff that we think is what love is, and we imprint it without thinking about it. We don't, we don't filter it, we don't judge it, we just go, that must be the way it is. As an adult, we do the same thing to mirror that Again, sometimes it's opposing that by flipping the script, but most of us tend to copy what happened when we were children. I did it myself in my own way. Most of us, I think, I think all of us, I would say almost all of us have done that. So my point is that it's not something you say, oh, it never happened to me. It's more about can we admit, can you see whether there are common threads between your adult dating life and your history when you were, when you were a child and see where the overlap is. Because if you do, that's a good sign. If you don't, that can be challenging because the truth is sometimes it's almost more, more hidden that you may, again, maybe having some relationship with, well, um, let me think about this. Maybe you were raised in a family where your father or your mother or somebody in the parents were always arguing with each other, were yelling and screaming at each other. That was always happening in their lives. And maybe when you got to be an adult in a relationship, if you didn't hear loud voices raised by your partner or yourself, you didn't feel very loving. Literally, your loving um, um, gauge was plugged into how loud you were because of what you're raised in your family with. It's, it's that sort of thing. It's like, it can be that simplistic or it can be that dramatic. So there's a wide spectrum of this. But the point is very simple. The way you were loved as an adult is largely influenced by the way you, you were loved as a child, either by love by your parents or the way you saw your parents loving each other, those two things. So now the question is, if you are in this place, you understand this, what do you do about it? Well, first of all, you can talk to me about it. <laughs> no, okay, I'm not gonna get there, not go with you yet. But here's the thing. First of all, is becoming aware. Because the biggest thing people don't do is actually go back and look at their child and go, hmm, what was it I was raised with? What were the values? What were the beliefs I had when I was a child that I watched my parents do that influenced my adult life? If you do that first, that's the big transformational step. Because once you become aware, you can start to make the changes. Because this is the thing. Awareness is the key, first key, which is to see your childhood and look at the patterns that happened 
to see as an adult how it ties together. If there is a parallel, which most of us have that parallel, or that um, behavioral repetition, then you can say, hang on a second, I see what's going on. Now, it won't solve everything necessarily, but to become aware is the first step, the first um, leap into changing your wiring. Now, this is important to know because once you do this, then you can start making changes because it's impossible to make changes of things you're not aware of. Basically, if you're not if you're not even aware of something, how are you going to make changes about it? So, becoming aware and seeing the patterns that you've been carrying around like um, suitcases from relationship to relationship without knowing it. When you see the pattern, you can change it. So, first of all, become aware, looking back at your own history, your own dating experiences, to look back at your childhood and go, okay, where's the common threads? What's similar? What's parallel? And at some point, you may start seeing the common threads line up. And when you do, awesome. When you become aware of that, you can then look at, okay, so what do you want to do about it? Personally, I would, I, I'm biased. I say you come talk to me about it, but if you want to do it yourself, you can. But the simplest things, what you, what you need to do, or you, what we'd recommend you do, is start doing some rewiring. You become an electrician, basically, in the sense that you get, you get to revisit your childhood and change the wiring you have, or the programming, if you want to be a computer type person, I mean, use any, any analogy you want, but it's changing the beliefs you had as a child. Now, you can do it if you've got the, the experience of doing this to actually talk to your inner child. I was referencing um, um, Rocket Man last week because I went and saw the movie. And there's a scene in the movie, not to spoil anything, although the movie is actually docu- sort of a biopic in a way, so not spoiling anything. But there's a scene in the movie where he basically comes back to, see, to face his younger self, where Elton faces Reginald. And they basically have a healing moment. If you have the access to that part of yourself and you can talk to that part of yourself, then you can actually have a healing moment to change that. Because when you have a reconnection, then you can transform the relationship that you have with yourself with love. Which means that then as an adult, you can change the relationship you have with anybody else with love as well. I think I said that clearly. So by changing the wiring inside with your younger self, means you can change the love you express to those outside of yourself. Every relationship, not just romantic. But this is fundamental. If it's something you want to get help with, I do recommend getting to see somebody, whether you see a therapist, although personally, I'm going to say this nicely. I've got a background in spiritual psychology and and 18 years as a spiritual counselor. However, I'm not a big fan of therapy for certain things because they can go for a long time to get there. But if you know you're up to to a place where you want to transform this and change your future, I'm I'm personally thinking I could help you. I've, I've been through this with so many clients where we see this wiring and we go back to change it which part of it is that reparenting to actually make peace with your younger self so you can start to have an uh, a loving conversation so to speak to change the wiring the beliefs the programming so that that influence no longer affects your adult dating life and when you change the wiring it changes everything it's like dominoes you knock one down they'll just fall into place and what happened is once you do change that wiring your relationship um um what's the one looking for not strategy wrong word Trajectory, that's the word. Your relationship trajectory will shift from the same old thing to something totally new. That's a promise. It does work. But you've got to be willing to do the work to get there. So, let me make sure I cover all the points. I hope this is making sense because this is something that's really big. For a lot of people, there is no um, easy way to explain it. I mean, this is the best way I can describe it. I've talked about this many times before in maybe not so blunt format, but I want to get this out because it was actually a conversation I had with a friend of mine today that inspired this talk. Um, and she'll know because she knows the pat- noticed that I've cleaned up the plant. Um, if you watch my Facebook Lives, you may notice the plant looks a bit healthier today. I did some clean up, thanks to my friend's input today. Anyway, total sidebar. So this is, <laughs> this is a little teaching point that will help you, help you get some clarity about your dating choices. So if you are finding the same thing happening repetition, rep- repeatedly, repetitious rep- yeah repeatedly as an adult then you can go actually go back and change the source of this because the repeat patterns the same thing happening again and again and again the same cycle with different face same pattern going on that's the clue when you're aware of the same thing happening then you know that there's something going on from when you were younger that's creating that subconscious automatic programming like a like a circuitry that you can't change this is where you can make a difference because the first step again is awareness seeing that is there so Either one, I mentioned the other one earlier, so let me give you both of those again. One of them is to notice looking back at your past upbringing. Where were the things that influenced your adult dating life? What were the same patterns, the same cycles, the same 
experiences that you had as younger stuff that happened as an adult. The other way of approaching it is to look back at your past few relationships and look at the common threads. What was happening at each time that was the same sort of thing? Did you have the same argument? Did you do the same sort of treatment? Did you treat them the same way? Did you have something that didn't work between you that ended the relationship or was dysfunctional that you had to leave because of it? Those seeds, those perceptions will shift your awareness because when you start seeing the commonality, then you look back at your childhood and see what started it. Not to say that the other person isn't responsible for something. I'm not saying you can't, I'm not trying to say this. You may have upsets against your, re your past relationships. I'm not talking about you, you, you let them off the hook, although that could be nice at the end by doing some forgiveness. What I'm talking about though is letting yourself off the hook. It's changing your wiring that's putting you in those situations in the first place. If you've been in abusive relationships or wounding relationships that are unhealthy, this is especially important because if you don't want to keep doing that, this can change that. So become aware, look back, see the parallels, see the common, see the common threads, and you can do some changes by basically reparenting, as I call it, or just integrating your younger self to your adult self, and you can change it. Now, a couple of quick links, just so I wanted to talk about this. If you want to reach out to me to find out more about how I work, I do, I'll leave a link in the comments for a discovery session. It's a complimentary clarity conversation that we can have to see where you are and where you want to go. I'll put the link in the comments. Um, Actually, I'll just do that. I'll put that link in the comments. That'll be that. That'll be the thing I'll do. Because if you want to reach out, we want to talk first. I'm not, I, I, do, I do coach clients. I'm not putting links to coaching in there because, frankly, before we do that, we need to talk. So if you're interested in that, I'll put the link in the comments. I hope it's making some sense to you. If you know anybody should see this, please share it with them. This might, in fact, change somebody's life, if not yours. Um, awareness is often curative, as I've learned a seminar years ago. So being aware is the first step. Start there and see what happens. If you want more help, then link them in the comments. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live, by the way. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually. Occasionally it gets shifted. And um, so the Facebook Live is on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. My business page is where the replays go. Please like my page, which is barryselby.author. And then also they go to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby is the channel. Please subscribe. And Messages from the Masculine is the playlist. Um, I think that's it. If you have any questions, any thoughts, you can put them in the comments below and I'll respond. If you want to share with anybody, do that as well. And if you want to get some help, I'll leave the link in the comments. You can find me and get some help yourself. With that, I thank you for watching. I hope this has been of value to you. This is maybe the bigger piece of the work. I don't usually talk about the big stuff. I play lighter usually. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do invite you to watch my replays because these could change your life and certainly your love life. So with that, I thank you for watching. Um, I know it's a bit heavy for a Sunday, but I want to talk about this today to get it out in the, in the conversation. So I thank you for being with me as always. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourself and I'll see you again soon. Bye.